And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. So we have a demonic demagogue in the White House whose model for leadership would no doubt be Mao Zedong. And you're saying, ah, oh, don't be crazy. That can't happen here. Welcome to the Savage Nation. I'm going to take you on a long ride today. Mao Zedong allegedly took his people on a long march, which was a complete lie, according to historians, a fabrication of his equivalents of the White House uh, press corps. There was no long march. It was a fake. Mao Zedong was a monster, a monster, a monster who used his, let us say, salesmanship to take over China and through scheming, blackmailing and poisoning to get his way. And his secret goal was to dominate the world. In chasing the dream of conquering the world, Mao Zedong caused the deaths of 38 million people in the greatest famine in history. And according to real historians, well over 70 million Chinese perished under Mao's rule in peacetime. So you say, well, what the heck does that have to do with that nice man in the White House? Why, he just wants racial justice. He needs a deserved vacation in Hawaii with his nice wife, Michelle, and his two lovely daughters. That's $70 million as money well spent on all of his vacations. Think of how hard he just worked to get through that budget over the objections of, let us say, nobody. And Nancy Pelosi has all the funding she could possibly need. They're swimming in, in money in San Francisco right now. They don't know what to do with it. There's not enough estates from here to Costa Rica for the folks around the boxers, the Pelosi's, and the Feinsteins to buy. There's not enough land. There's nothing. Not enough of anything. There's so much been purchased with the largesse of this wonderful leader in the White House. So we're waiting impatiently now to see what they'll buy up next. But oh, I don't want to get distract distracted from what's going on. The, you know that there's no Republican Party. I've told you it's a one-party system since 1994 when I started in radio. I called it a one-party system playing two-card Monty. I told you it was Democrats or Republicans. I told you it was a two-card Monty with you know three three shells on the table with no P on the either she any of the shells. I told you that. It's been a shell game all along. I'm shocked that people are waking up who backed George Bush, who went to dinner with George Bush, who licked George Bush's shoes, who promoted the Republican Party for 20 years, suddenly saying, end the Republican Party. Really? Really? Welcome to the club. But I want to get back to uh, this question. What do you fear Obama's going to do before he leaves office, if he does leave office, that is? Since he is unstoppable, since virtually everything this crazy man has wanted, he has gotten, and you only know the half of it, not even a half of what he's done. I'll try to fill in the, the details today uh, on the program in the next three hours. He's gotten everything he wanted, virtually every one of his punch list, everything on his punch list of the radical far left agenda has been imposed upon the American people. There's only a few things left. What do you fear this crazy man is going to do before he leaves office? That's number one. And I want to go back to Mao Zedong for a minute. Because I've called this uh, leader of ours Obama. Obama. It fits nicely. It's kind of a nice ring to it. Obama. I used it a few years ago. There's a great biography that I started reading last night called The Unknown Story Mao by Yung Chang. Little bedtime reading. Little light reading. About 800 pages. This woman was a Red Guard briefly at the age of 14. Now, many of you don't know what a Red Guard is. The thugs in Baltimore and the thugs in Ferguson, the thugs at Yale, who are screaming at white professors, driving them off campus under the guise of white privilege, they are the Red Guards of today. They are Obama's guards. They don't know that. Some of them do know it. The leadership, which is all white, communists out of Chicago, they know who they are. They are the new Red Guards. But they're not wearing little blue suits with red, red stars, are they? These are the Red Guards. I call them Obama's Guards. This one, this author, Yung Chang, was a Red Guard, a real one, at the age of 14. And then she worked as a peasant, as a barefoot doctor. You may remember that phrase from the 1970s. Anyway, she eventually worked her way to uh, England. She obtained a Ph.D. in linguistics in 1982. 
the first person from the People's Republic of China to receive a doctorate from British University. She wrote a best-selling book called Wild Swan in 1991. And this is an older book. She knows the true story of Mao Zedong and his communist revolution. She spent 10 years researching this. And when you hear what Mao Zedong actually did, what he did to people, his fellow Chinese, and what it has to do with what Obama is trying to do to, I wouldn't say his people, because I don't know who his people are. It's hard to say who his people are since he has such utter contempt for the American people. What he's trying to do to the West, let's put it to you that way. Yes, I have a savage indictment of Barack Obama. Michael Savage gives you a savage indictment of the most dangerous man in American history, a man who gets away with virtually anything he wishes to get away with. You say, well, you know, things aren't that bad. The economy's pretty good. Gasoline is cheap. I can go away this vacation. The snow fell up in the mountains. How bad can things be? Well, I don't know. How bad can things be? What do you fear Obama's going to do before he leaves office? I've been warning you for a long time now. Virtually everything I've warned you would happen has happened, and what I haven't warned you will happen, will eventually happen. And I've been telling you that I studied the communist cultural revolution for a long time. During that period, the Red Guards roamed China and destroyed any symbol of a decadent bourgeois culture, including the food dogs that I collect. Because Mao Zedong believed that these food dogs were, in Obama's terms, symbols of unfairness. And so people, Chinese people, ordinary Chinese people who hid from these maniacs, tried to remove and hide these treasures of China's vast cultural heritage. Some even removed ceramic roof tiles on which these lion dogs were mounted to save them from Mao Zedong's rapacious young thugs of political correctness. But Mao named the thugs Red Guards. Does that sound familiar to you? Today, our rogue president's Red Guards are rapidly destroying every vestige of America's cultural heritage. From the schools to universities, young brains are being washed of history and logic. Science is being replaced by rote repetition of big lies. Children are being taught that a better, more fair world is being created, when in fact it is a totalitarian monstrosity. The world of Obama is a world of conformist beliefs, not critical thought. It's a world where centralized authority replaces individualism, where conformity and nihilism trump creativity and faith. It is a world where the Red Guards of America, once independent media and academic establishments, now seek out, remove, and attempt to destroy any symbol of American distinction and greatness. Obama is really great at leading America in the wrong direction. This is a rogue president. And so these are from pages 26 and 27 of <coughs> Government Zero, which is a very, very important book. And I keep repeating it until you finally understand that I'm not just selling you a book, I'm selling you an idea. An idea that unless enough Americans understand the model that this maniac in the White House is using, the worst is yet to come. The maniac just got a budget that is incomprehensible because there is no Republican Party. It's one and the same. I've told you it's Democrats. I've told you it's Republicans. I've told you this for 21 years. Fine. For a while we were winning. In fact, I would take some credit for having caused some of the upheavals in the last two federal elections. But what good does it do if you don't have a party to represent you? They don't have the will nor the means, so what's the difference? They're all frauds anyway, by and large. The only good ones you never hear from. They were put in the back of the bus right from the beginning by John Boehner and the others. So before it gets worse, and before we go into this in any more detail, do we have any of Obama's speech yet from today? you got to listen to this maniac crowing this morning about his victory and what's going to come. Robert, play what you have. Uh, there's some things in there that I don't like, but that's the nature of legislation and, and compromise. And I think uh, the system worked. That uh, gives me s some optimism that next year on a narrow set of issues, we can get some more work done. I don't know if you know what he just said. I've told you he's a, I told you he's a psychopath. I told you that he shows all the signs of a psychopathic madman. Now, what do I mean by that? Do you think that a psychopath has to run down the street with a hatchet and hit someone? Do you think a psychopath has to buy a machine gun and shoot up a school? A psychopath can destroy a nation without firing a shot. Do you understand that? 
Now, that's why I want to talk about Mao Zedong. Many of you don't know who he was. In fact, there's a revival going on in China right now for this madman. That's hard to believe that the Chinese are that stupid. I thought they were an intelligent people. I thought that once they rid themselves of this hardcore communism, they would never want to go back there. But apparently they're chasing the same dream all over again. This maniac, Mao Zedong, caused the deaths of 38 million people during the greatest famine in history because he imposed his views of agriculture on the Chinese. In well, uh, in all, well over 70 million Chinese died under Mao's rule, rule, and that's during peacetime. But what does it have to do with Obama? Well, you have to look at the man's psychology to see the comparison or the parallel. And that would be a ruthless portrait of Mao Zedong's accumulation of power through the exercise of terror. Now, we don't have an exercise of physical terror in this country quite yet, other than the burning of Baltimore, the killing of police in Ferguson and other cities by his Red Guards. We have, as people, not yet seen his reign of terror. You have to enter the shadowy chambers of Mao Zedong's mind to see where he went. You have to see how evil he was towards women, towards his wives and children. You have to look at what he did to his, his cohorts, meaning men who fought with him how he tortured them to death in order to, re to gain, gain uh, power over them. And I can read some of this to you, how he twisted the world, even against other communists, to show how he was really their leader. What he did to them is beyond comprehension, something you could never understand. Unless you understand history itself, you could never understand what he did. Burying enemies alive. For example, Mao Zedong's main party rivals were men we never heard of. Chang, Kuo Tao, you never heard of them. Men back in the 1930s. And so what Mao Zedong did was he sabotaged any competitor, even on the communist side. And then he sent the remainder of their men. He had a very large army, this competitor. Mao sabotaged him during the long march. And then he sent half the remainder of the other men to its doom in the northwest desert, burying the survivors alive. Did you know that Mao Zedong welcomed the Japanese invasion of China? as a way to destroy Shanghai check. I'm trying to give you a thumbnail sketch of, the, of what happens when a person is insane and attains power. An insane genius like Hitler, an insane genius like Stalin, an insane genius like Mao Zedong. These are very important models for you to understand in order to understand the insane genius that's running the United States of America off the rails. Now, before I finish this little monologue and invite your calls, and you've already occupied every line that's available because this is the most thoughtful show in the history of talk radio this is not democrat republican this is not that you're not going to get that you're going to get something a little a little different a little deeper that's why i'm getting the best callers in the history of radio and i want to go on with this thought for a minute no you know what i'll take a quick break and come back with a little talk about the inuit in the arctic before the white man came right here on the savage nation Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. You know, many of you are, are limited in your thinking, so when I talk about Obama and Mao Zedong, you think I'm making a direct comparison. It's because your minds are limited. I'm trying to show you a bigger picture. Of course, he's not exactly like Mao Zedong. These are different times. We are a different people, different situation. But he has the same mentality as Mao Zedong. So drop line two. He, he's a limited, you know, one-track caller who doesn't quite get it. But if you look at the overall picture of Mao Zedong, and you look at the overall picture of Barack Obama, who is still a very young man, and then you understand that power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely, and that this maniac has absolute power. Not quite. He almost has absolute power. You have to ask yourself, what would this lunatic do, given his hatred for the American people and America itself? What might he do if he gains any more power, since there's no opposition to this man? It's unlimited in what he might do. That's what I'm trying to warn you. Now, this would take maturity in history. Now, I hope there are some Chinese listening to the show who lived through Mao Zedong's Red Guards period. I want you to open up one line, Jim. So we have one open line special for Chinese who lived through Mao Zedong 